The Today Show is proudly sponsored by Chandler's. Good morning, this is Today, I'm Elizabeth Hayes. I'm George Negus, good morning, uh, it's good you could be with us this Wednesday morning, June the 14th. Our top story, possibly the one thing that thrills Australians more than any other, being the Poms at cricket. Australia has uh, won the first test at Headingley, we've got a full report. His partner, Merv Hughes, into De Freitas. And he's bowled him, so Merv Hughes finishes off the test match, and Australia have had a terrific victory here at Headingley. Yeah, a little beauty. And we hear from uh, Captain Courageous himself, Alan Border, about the win. Also, a controversial report from a Brisbane suburb perched on top of a hazardous toxic waste dump. The residents complain of serious health problems, but would you believe they're being told it's all in their minds? Sure it is. They think that they're sick. And we'll also, of course, uh, look at the worsening situation in China. As well, this morning we'll find out about the fate of those South Australian dolphins under sentence of death because the Adelaide Marine Land has closed. No other dolphinarium will take them, but there is apparently now a good chance that a new home could be found. Plus, you'll be surprised to know, and very pleased to know, George, yes. we're going to road test the new Nissan oh, Pulsar, good. your favourite good. segment. Yes. Motoring. <laughs> Just some of the stories coming up this morning, but first to the news, and good morning, Eric Walters. Good morning, Liz. George, good morning, everyone. The Australian cricketers are the talk of the sporting world this morning after a convincing 210-run victory against England in the first Ashes test played at Headingley. England needed 402 runs for victory, but could only manage 191. Swing bowler Terry Alderman, who won the Man of the Match award, led the way when he captured 5 for 44. The West Australian was in devastating form as he ripped through the England top order. Oh, Caught by Mark Taylor, looking to force it across on the onside, changed his mind. He dismissed the first innings century maker Alan Lamb for just four runs. OK, got him, he's gone, yes, he's out, got a good piece of bowling. The Gooch posed the biggest threat and when he left after scoring 68 runs, the home team's chances of avoiding defeat went with him. He's got him, no, he's got him, a good hard look. Two policemen are dead after a high-speed car chase on the New South Wales north coast early this morning. A third officer is in hospital in a serious condition after their car ran off the road near Wardell. Police have set up roadblocks south of the accident site in the hope of catching the driver of the other vehicle. A frantic rescue operation is underway in Western Australia for six miners feared drowned in a flash flood. Police divers... Uh, will soon join locals in a desperate search for the men who were last seen about 30 metres below the surface. They were trapped when a nearby creek burst its banks and flooded the mine at Leinster, 300 kilometres north of Kalgoorlie. Rescuers admit the chance of finding them alive is very slim. The federal government is considering a major relief package for struggling homeowners to be introduced in the August budget. Prime Minister Hawke and Treasurer Keating will meet today and are expected to consider proposals for a new tax on luxury goods and a tax cut on interest from savings. A major boost for the Federal Liberal Party last night when a pre-selection victory for former National Farmers Federation Chief Ian McLaughlin tipped as a potential Prime Minister. Mr McLaughlin is now almost certain to enter Parliament at the next election after winning the right to contest the safe Liberal seat of Barker in South Australia. Mr McLaughlin caught sitting member James Porter off guard when he announced while overseas only two weeks ago he'd finally end speculation about his political aspirations. At Border Town in the southwest of South Australia, the delegates of the Barker Electoral College considered their choice, while Mr McLaughlin, isolated during the vote, waited. And it didn't take long. To the candidate for Barker, the next federal election will be, be Mr Ian McLaughlin. Mr McLaughlin scored 95 votes. Mr Porter scored 22 votes. James Porter was gracious in defeat, refusing to criticise anyone and promising to work with the party until the election. He says he won't stand for another federal seat. Mr McLaughlin says he'll continue his battle with the unions. He says there should be no compulsory unionism and black bans should be made illegal. I mean, I think that that'll come to Australia and I think that Australians want it. In fact, the polls say they want it. 
Such a convincing win may have cast doubts over Mr Porter's future, but it's left no doubt about the direction of the Liberal Party. Cheryl Cartwright, National 9 News. The savage clampdown on dissidents in China has gathered new momentum, with the showing on national television of a most wanted list of student leaders. The broadcast confirms earlier reports that organisers of the democracy campaign escaped both the massacre in Beijing and the manhunt immediately afterwards. The military and the hardliners are back in control of Beijing and of China, but it's not immediately obvious. Eight days after the massacre of students, the city has returned to a shaky approximation of normality. On the surface, the people go to work, there are no food shortages, the complicated life of a vast city goes on seemingly unhindered. Meanwhile, the government adds to its wanted list every day. The quiet people of Beijing are being asked to turn in anyone they suspect of counter-revolutionary activities, an old code word from the days of Chairman Mao's suppression. It's very dangerous indeed for foreign film crews to operate now. These pictures show Tiananmen Square dressed like a parade ground. Tanks and armoured vehicles polished and immaculately ranged. A showpiece to remind the people that the army was and is victorious. Chinese television broadcast a wanted list of top students, confirming the leading student activists had escaped the dragnet that fell immediately after the massacre. The Soviet Union and West Germany have made an historic pact to turn their military machines into defensive forces and to work for a united Europe. The pledge signed today by Mikhail Gorbachev is the Kremlin's first of its kind with a Western nation. For the Germans, it was one more reason to give their Soviet guests a roof-raising welcome. And the visitors responded in kind, giving one small boy his own personal summit and a place in Soviet public relations history. The German battleship Bismarck sunk soon after being launched by Hitler in the 1940s, has been found off the coast of France. The ship went down with all but 115 of its a crew of more than 2,000. It was, was discovered by the same remote-controlled robot used to locate the Titanic. Salvagers promise it will be left undisturbed as a war grave. In finance news, the London share market has closed lower after a renewed weakness in sterling. A sharp fall in bond prices pushed Wall Street to close down. Uh, blue chip stocks made a late recovery on bargain hunting. Gold prices are continuing to recover from their weekend plunge. The Australian dollar is slightly higher in quiet trading during the night. For the more adventurous traveller, there's a unique trip through America's high country that could be just what you're looking for. Backpacking with llamas. Capable of carrying heavy loads, the South American animals are the main feature on a trek through Arizona and Utah. While their owners say they're quiet, observant and willing, there's one big character flaw. If you happen to be in the way, then you could get involved. But for the most part, um, it, the llamas don't spit at people. We sincerely hope not. Now, on this day, 14th of June 1937, there was a momentous event in McMahon's Point to Mr. and Mrs. Hector Bury, a son, Brian. It's time to say happy birthday, Brian. Ah, uh -uh. thank you, Eric. Thank you very much. We were trying to hide the fact I'm not allowed to say how old I am, but now they all know. Thank you very much. Only if they're good at arithmetic. George is bemused. I was trying to get that wheelchair out of the studio. Uh-oh. <laughs> I didn't say that. Lizzie, you're not an ageist, are you, love? I'm not. And, <laughs> nor is George. Yeah. And Ecker, and thanks, everybody. It's been absolutely lovely of you, and I'm who today. You don't, you don't, look, a, you don't look an ounce of 62. Well, no, I'm not. <laughs> you know, Gordon Chater tells everyone he's 10 years older, so they'll all say, oh, you look well for your age. I would do that. Good trick, isn't it? <laughs> the good one. Thanks, kids. I've got to get on. Hey, we won the cricket. Oh, fantastic. Perth, fine. Cool and cloudy. 16 seats. They don't give up on you, even when it's your birthday. <laughs> in the Pilbara, rain, some heavy falls in 20. The Kimberley District, rain in 32. The Golden West, rain periods and a top of 15. The Great Southern, cool and showery. 15 should be the top. And in Adelaide, cool with periods of rain, fresh to strong northwesterly winds. 13. Hope you're not superstitious in Adelaide. Nah. Hobart, periods of rain changing to showers later in the day. It's going to be rather cold. Southeasterly winds gradually freshening and a top of just 10. Launceston, periods of rain rather cold. Moderate to fresh northwesterly winds turning southeast later in 12. Melbourne, 
cloudy with rain periods, fresh northerly winds moderating and top of 13. Mildura, cool and cloudy, 13. Bendigo, cool, a oh, bit cold really. Cloudy, rain periods 12. Sail, cool and cloudy with rain 15. Canberra, fine, partly cloudy. Northwesterly winds, they'll freshen and a top of 13. The Illawarra will be cool today. Increasing cloud, northwesterly winds and 18. Same for the central west, cool with increasing cloud 19. Riverina, cloud increasing, patchy rain developing. Griffith, 17. And then the Hunter, fine with increasing high cloud. Newcastle, a top of 20. Sydney, Cool to mild, light to moderate northwesterly winds increasing. The sunrise was El Stunno's today. You'll love it. 19. Brisbane, fine and mostly fine. That is a brief shower this morning, see? 21. Townsville and Cairns, both fine and 25. Looks fantastic. And my mates in Mount Isa will love it. Fine and sunny, light winds and 24. 21, a bit cloudy in the Alice and Darwin's fine. And 28 will be the top. Don't mind them called gorgeous. I've just positioned myself under that. Here we go. Here's the satellite picture. And as you can see, quite a lot of cloud slip streaming through there. Now, Eric and Michael Pascoe need 10 inches of snow to fall on the southern Alps of New South Wales because they'll be going skiing. So I think there's a bit of snow in that little lot for them. Hmm. They're going skiing, George. Yeah, they, I wish you'd stop using those Spanish meteorological terms like El Stano. El Stano, say. You thought it was the El Nino. No. <laughs> Is that... Oh. Oh. You can get away with that because oh, it's your birthday. Am I allowed to do that now? Don't Only you? because it's your birthday. Oh, thanks very much. Moving right along. Australia has uh, won the first test at Headingley by 210 runs. It's the first time we've uh, won at that ground in 25 years. It's also the first test that, that we won against the English for several years. For Alan Border, it's his eighth test victory as captain. Tim Wharton has the highlights. Any second run would have been absolute suicide. And with an overall lead of 329, the Australian pair of Alan Border and Dean Jones lashed out, desperate to get quick runs. Well hit. Bouncing just inside the rope. After smashing 72 runs in the space of just 42 minutes, Border then declared the Australian innings closed at 3 for 230. Border walking over now towards the pavilion. Yes, they've decided. That's enough. Set a victory target of 402. The home side had just 17 runs on the board when Broad fell. Close, that's got him, yes, he's plumb. There goes Broad. Kim Barnett then stepped to the crease and steadied the innings with some fine he's stroke play. Glorious off drive. He's a bit of a go with this guy. He went in the first innings and under pressure here, he's playing these shots. It's great to see. But in the first over after lunch, Alderman had Barnett on his way. Oh, it's got him, yes, well caught by Mark Taylor. Lamb padded up but he too was soon facing the long walk back, out for just four. OK, got him, he's gone, yes, he's out, tried a good piece of bowling. The it was then the English skipper's turn to take on the Australian Arsenal, but he had a few shots of his own. Well played, beautiful shot by Gar. anything short just outside off stump is being punished in this test match. But just when Gower and Gooch appeared to have steadied the English ship, Lawson rocked the boat. And well taken there by Ian Healy, so the ploy has worked. Four for 134, and without a run added to the total, Lawson struck again, this time Robin Smith. And well taken by Border. With partners coming and going, Gooch decided it was time to open the shoulders. Nice off drive, and Gooch taking the opportunity of beating mid-off. As Gooch gave his all, one of the fans decided to show it all. The distraction must have disturbed Gooch's concentration, because soon Gooch after, out, the opener in, was on his way. He's got in, no, he's got in, a good hard look. Derek Pringle then stepped Derek up Pringle. and was soon stepping back again. He's out yes, for a duck. he's out, straight to border. And Edelman picks up his fourth wicket at seven for one, five, three. Jack, Jack Russell, the English terrier of the first innings, this time was unable to find the oh, same spirit. The yes, a big appeal there, he's out caught behind, Merv user struck again. In contrast, the Australians were growing in strength, particularly Alderman, who then claimed Newport and his fifth wicket of the innings. In the air, he's got him, great catch, beautifully taken. Now only De Freitas and Foster stood between oh, the Australians no, and Hughes. victory, and Hughes was given Into the honour of taking the final wicket. And he's bowled him, so Merv Hughes finishes off the Test match. And Australia have had a terrific victory here at Headingley. So a memorable victory for Australia, particularly for skipper Alan Border, leading his side to their first victory at Headingley in 25 years and their eighth test win under his guidance. In contrast, there'll be some soul-searching for David Gower, now one down in the five-match test series and facing many questions about his leadership and his side's ability. Terrific stuff. Did Merv give Alan another kiss, did he? I felt a clinch coming on. Oh, well, they're, they're close. It's a good, That's okay. close team. Shortly after the match, Alan Border held a press conference and here's what he had to say. 
we've got five tests to go. There's a hell of a lot that can happen. I think it, it, there's no doubt in my mind that there will be test matches where we're behind the eight ball and have to sort of fight our way out of it. Um, so obviously we want to go into the second test match with the uh, same sort of attitude to, to win. Alan, do you, it looked throughout the match as though you had the, the bit between your teams and you really fought for it every day, every session. Do you, do you accept that you out fought in the game? I think it came down to that first day. It, uh, we, we were very, very conscious of playing good positive cricket and, and not letting England dominate us on their home sort of soil. Um, but the first day, was it, it really set us up. I mean, if you, if you think about all the, the bogeys that go through your mind and uh, the problems we've had here in, in past test series that, that I've been involved with, not so much the blokes upstairs, um, that sort of put to rest a lot of the, the dramas we might have been thinking about and um, from day one from that point on we, we really did play good positive cricket and uh, you know really felt as though we had a real big chance of winning the game. Yeah obviously at lunch we thought oh, the game sort of slipping away and um, yeah, the conversation at lunch between the players was still very positive and it was basically just one of those situations where we just felt that just given our fair share of luck and if we take three, four wickets in that middle session, I mean, maybe we can sort of press home some advantage in the afternoon. Um, and as it turned out, the middle session was, uh, well, the, the big one, six wickets and a couple of streakers, sensational. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I would have thought that was sensational, yes. Yeah, well, it gave the voice a bit of a kick along. It was a woman, was it? Or a I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't looking. When we come back, Good. the latest in the saga of Kingston, a suburb built on chemical waste. This is today. G'day. You'll be noticing some changes soon at Maxwell's. 